Okay, so here's my server core. It does not have an operating system and there's no CD installed in it. So we need to create a WDS server that we can install Windows 2016 core on this server. Here's my Windows server that already exists in my organization running Active Directory. I'm gonna log into it and add, come on, the roles and features. I'm gonna add the, yep, the server one, the WDS right down here, Windows Deployment Services. Check that. It asked, do you wanna add the service tools to manage it? Yes, I do. And hit next. No other features are gonna be selected. And it says this is the deployment server and also the transport server. It's, a, it's essentially what is used to, um, to make deployment services available on the network. And install. A uh, little housekeeping real quick. I also want to make sure that on my on this computer that's going to have WDS installed, I need to have the Windows 2016 DVD. Or if you're deploying, let's say, Windows 10, you're going to want the Windows 10 DVD in the DVD drive. And same thing goes for Windows 7. If you're installing Windows 7, you'll want the Windows 7 in the DVD drive. So for this example, where you're going to be remotely installing server 2016. So that's the disk that I have in the DVD drive. All right, so it looks like it's done. Uh, WDS, okay, it's online, but it's not actually running. So I'm gonna open up the Windows Deployment Services Council underneath Tools. Yeah, we'll minimize this. All right, so if we go to servers, we can see that this server is running, but it's not configured. So we need to right click on it and select configure server. This will open up a wizard and ask me questions about how I want to deploy this. So before you begin, things we need to know, we need to have Active Directory running. Well, this server happens to be a domain controller so we're good there. If you do this on a server that is not a domain controller, just make sure that you're logged in as the domain administrator on that server so it has access to Active Directory. We also need to make sure there is a DHCP server on the network because these Windows computers, they don't have an operating system, they're gonna be booting up over the network, which means they need to obtain an IP address and boot options on what server is the WDS server that it can load an operating system from. And DNS needs to be active on our network as well so it can resolve names of the servers that it's going to be booting uh, images off of. And an NTFS file system partition to store these images because you essentially these images are copies of the CD of the DVDs in the installation DVDs. Okay so we're going to integrate this with Active Directory so we're gonna leave that option set. Now, this is where we're storing all of the images. This is where we're storing all of the, the DVD images, the copies of the, the DVDs. So in a real server, I would put this not on the C drive. I would put it on the D drive or another separate other than the system drive because these images can get large and take up a lot of space. So we don't want them on the same volume that your Windows installation is. But for us, we're gonna leave it there by default. So it just defaults to that option. And it says the volume selected is the system volume. We recommend you don't do this, right? So I'm gonna say, yeah, I do wanna do this in this example. But in reality, we wouldn't do that. Now, this is where you need to pay attention. I have DHCP is already running on this server that I'm installing WDS on. So it's gonna add these automatically, these, these options, these scope options. If DHCP is running on another server that you do not have WDS running on, then you're gonna to wanna to add these options right here. DHCP option 60 needs to be added to your uh, DHCP scope option. 
So we'll take a look at that after this finishes the install. So it says, if DHCP is running on this server, check both of the boxes down below. If a non-DHP server is running, you're going to have to go to option 60 in your DHP scope and add the IP address or the name of the WDS server. So we're going to leave them checked, okay, because it says up here, if we have DHP on the server, check both of the following boxes. We have them checked. So now we're going to next. Okay, so Pixie service. So the Pixie server is... The, the WDS server that's going to respond to computers that don't have operating systems, they're going to want to boot on the network, get an IP address, and then contact the Pixie server and say, hey, give me a boot image or an image that I can load into RAM so I can start the installation process. So here are some security settings, and we can tell this server to respond to any client, or we can say specifically, only respond to computers that we know or trust. Okay, so by default it says don't respond to anybody because then you can you have to manually go in and add the MAC address of each computer that you want it to respond to. Or for here, for, for this example, we want to respond to all client computers, known and unknown, just for this lab. But you could go back in and uncheck that setting back to don't respond because we don't want to have to manually have to add each computer for now in this particular instance. This option require administrative approval. So the server will respond to the client, to the computer that's booting up that doesn't have an operating system, but it will sit there and wait until you as an administrator go into WDS and say, oh, yeah, here's a new client. Right click, I'm going to approve that client. And now the client will get a message saying, okay, now we can continue on further down the, the installation process. So we're not going to check that one either. Again, we just want to keep this as smooth as possible. That's what those settings are for. Now it's copying files. The server did not respond to the start or control request in a timely fashion. So we might need to manually hit start. So see it's in the off state. So we need to right click all tasks and start it. Now it started. All right, it just took a little longer. So we have install images and boot images. And then pending devices, these are computers that boot up that ask the boot server, the WDS server, to do something. And this is where you would have to approve them, right click and approve them. And then these are the actual live trans uh, multicast stream of data that's going to these these devices. And then the, this is where I would add drivers for if I have specialty hardware that needs a special driver in order for Windows to work. Most hardware that you purchase is going to be very compatible with the drivers that come included, but if you did have some specialty stuff, this is where you would add it in there. Okay, so we need to add a boot image first and then an install image. The boot image is the image that is the actual installer, and the install image is the actual operating system that we want it to install. So boot image, we're going to right click on that, add boot image. Okay, the boot image we get off of the DVD. So we're going to browse to the DVD. And it's in the sources folder. Hit open. And it's looking for a Windows image file, WIM. So you can see down here we have two of them, a boot and an install. We're going to choose the boot image, hit open, and hit next. And it says this is the Microsoft Windows setup boot image. So it's a mini operating system used to set up Windows. So we're going to hit next and next. And now it's copying that boot image from the DVD onto the C drive so WDS can offer it to clients. When that's done, we're going to add the uh, install image that you saw there sitting next to the boot image. Finish share, install image, add install image. Now, since we don't have an image group, they want you to group these into different groups. So in other words, this could be the server group, uh, another one could be a workstation group, another one could be the accounting group, however you want to organize it. We're going to leave it just image group one. Now we need to look for this image file and again it's on the d drive in the sources and it's install wim 
take a look at this real quick. So the boot image we copied was 263 megabytes. The install image is four gig. Okay, so that's the actual Windows operating system, the, the Windows server operating system. And we're gonna hit next. And it says, all right, so I found on this install image, different copies of Windows Server 2016. What do you want? Do you want all of them? Or do you want just some of them? In this example that I'm doing, I am only intend to install Windows Server Core. So I'm gonna uncheck all of these and only have the option to install Server Standard Core. Okay. That way I'm not copying all four gig. I'm only copying about one, one and a half. Hit next and next. Now you can leave all four checked. It just during the installation, it'll just ask you which one of these four operating systems do you want to install on this computer. Now we only get that one option. So it's going to copy all that information in. Let's go take a look while that's working at the DHCP settings and what was added DHCP okay so in here we're gonna take a look at my scope option and we can see right here the pixie client so we need to right click configure options we're gonna scroll down to option 60. And I don't see any of the setting there. But this is the Windows Deployment Services option. So that will tell the client to use this computer as your WDS server. Okay, so it added option 60. Minimize this. And we're still checking the integrity of the image and it's copying over. So while that's working, let's see if our workstation or our computer that doesn't have an operating system will actually boot to the network and load the boot image. The install image won't be there yet, but we'll at least see it boot. So we're going to click here, reset the system, and it should boot over the network, get an IP address, and then contact the WDS server. There it is, print enter for network boot service. So now it's booting off of my server. You can see the IP address at the bottom is my server IP address, and it's loading the boot.wim file that we copied off the DVD. And there's my Windows installer logo. And we probably will fail here because it doesn't have an actual install image. But we'll see what it gives us for errors. So this is, yep, so it gives us the basic options here. And now it wants the username and password for the domain. So it's going to be, I think my domain is my domain. Yeah. So oh, I need to provide my domain. There we go. So once I authenticate to the server or to Active Directory, I'm now provided a list of system images that I can install. And obviously there's none listed because we're not done copying it. There we go. The images were added successfully. So I finish. Now if I go back over here and restart this, We're going to restart that. Hopefully it'll boot up and load the actual image this time. There we 
There is loading the boot image from my WDS server. Okay, log in. There's the image. So the only one that's available is the only one that we selected. So this is going to install server 2016 standard core. And this is the C drive of this computer. So it's going to be installed on the C drive. And here's the installation. So I'm installing the server core operating system on this Windows computer all from my WDS server. And that's it.